Hi, it's Tom here from FDS, and today we're going to be looking at how to install a mini voltmeter. Obviously, with the rise of LiPo and IMR batteries, is now the main force in uh, electric mods. I feel it's about time that I showed some of the secrets to installing these, and today's blaster is going to be a rapid strike because I just happen to be building those at the moment. And uh, you can install them in nearly all the blasters with a bit of dead space. You can even get them into a strife. Obviously you can go and buy a $2 battery alarm and have that go off uh, when you get down to discharge. But uh, I like these. This is just a really cheap one. They come like this in a packet. They're a couple of dollars. There's three wire and two wire versions. And the three wire version has um, two and these two. And if you just put those two to your positive and there's your negative, you'll get it to work. I'll just demonstrate with my little pack here. I don't know how well the camera's going to pick these up. So you can see that that's a green one there. And uh, the way I fit them is I fit them flush so that the surface of the blaster matches the surface of the screen. There's a few pictures of those. So we're going to run through the tools you need. You will need some um, thinner wire. This is just model railway layout wire. It's easy to get anything like that and um, you can reuse pieces these come off of uh, the internals of a blaster and you can use those short pieces uh, you will need a very sharp knife you will need some plastic scrap this is 1.5 millimeter sheet styrene that I use for all my bodywork you can use sheet PVC as well don't bother flattening out PVC pipe that's just dumb you can go buy the stuff online look on eBay for flat PVC sheet tons of it, it's really cheap you'll also need some salvage screw post in this case, this is the post that the screw goes into from the other side. And just cut these out of old blasters. This piece comes from the fore end of a rapid strike that I rapid pistoled. And uh, then you'll also need a nice, fine Sharpie type pen. Your old jammed door switch. A flat file. This is a needle file. And uh, I always use good fresh needle files. Don't use ones that you've used on anything like white metal before. And uh, your plastic files are not going to be much use for metal after you've used them a lot of times. And a test pack and um, I just like to use these because I've got lots of rapid strike trays and it's a good use for for those so you will also need a piercing saw and um, you can use a fret saw if your parent or significant other or granddad or someone you can borrow one from has one I like the Julius piercing saw because you can get variable teeth pictures on it it has a good size frame for cutouts and they stay really sharp and the blades are cheap and um, these are very useful they also cut metals and they're used obviously in jewelry making they're relatively easy to get hold of and you will need a metal ruler i'm going to move the metal ruler out of shot because it reflects light right there are a couple of locations you can use in the rapid strike i've seen people put them in various places including up here in the stock and stuff i don't like any of the places other people put them i use this little helpful pedestal just here and it's exactly the right size to fit you'll get your voltmeter nicely slotted into there and it's also then protected by the sling loop this also works on flat tops because even when you flat top it you're going to be stopping here because of the handle um, and it works on rapid pistols so the thing I like about that location is it's always undisturbed and uh, it's easy to read because it's always in your eye line because you're pointing the blaster away from you and obviously you're going to be working with this sitting in this shell half and I do a couple of things to do uh, to make some support here and I'll run you through those. First step that you need to do is you need to measure your voltmeter. Now they're all pretty similar size and uh, these ones are, this one is uh, about it's 23 millimeters by 14 millimeters. So that's the size of the hole you're gonna make and what you're gonna do is obviously that's gonna be split down the middle. So your long dimension there 23 millimeters is going to be 11.5 and what I do is I measure 11 from the center line on the rapid strike and then I can file out so you want to cut small so when you measure out if you make your measurements a little bit smaller so that you can then file a really nice perfectly square hole for your voltmeter to slide into so you can take your rapid strike and mark it up now what you're going to do is you've got a useful reference line just here at the back of the blaster and you're going to run your line right up to there nearly because they fit almost exactly so there's your reference line and then you've got obviously 11 millimeters 11 and 11 millimeters on that line now I'll go and measure my 11 millimeters cool thing about this one is that it's got a nice square end on it, that's why I use a metal ruler, like that. 
Now, if you're going to keep this bastard blue and you're worried about these little bits of Sharpie, what you do after you've cut the hole and filed it is you need a little bit of solvent. And one solvent that works quite well for this is a sold as a digital uh, command and control or DCC track cleaner from what the railway use. And uh, I've got no idea what the solvent is, but it just works really well at wiping those off. So you can be a bit more careful if you're blue. This is going to be painted, so it doesn't matter because it's going to be sanded. So there's the area that you're going to cut. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go away and drill holes into these two corners. And then when you've drilled those holes, you can take your saw cut straight down there into the hole and straight down there into the hole. And then you can trim these off carefully like that. And that just leaves a little point here which you can either trim if you can get a pair of snips in there or you can um, also then file it back. So I'll go and drill those holes and then I'll make those two cuts and then you can see how I trim them to start. Okay, so there's the two guide holes. So I can go with a cross cut this way and cut into that one. But obviously I've done these a lot so I can kind of get away with being a little bit uh, more cavalier. So I'm going to go straight down this way. Again, remember to cut inside the line to begin with because you're going to file it all out to shape. This is where the precision comes in and this is where a piercing saw really, really works out well because it is a very precise saw. The blade on this one is actually bent, which is why I'm only using it for this and not cutting anything else. So I can go down there again. Now you see you can turn it in situ. There you go. So there's your roughed out cut in there and then obviously what I'm going to do in a minute is get my file and then I'll file all of that out. See there's my original line here and you can see I've come out a little bit and I've come down the same at the other end. Now that is about as square as you can get with hand cutting. So now we test fit. So this should, remember the decimal points want to face towards you, you don't want them facing away from you then your amount of numbers will be upside down. So that should just slide straight in now. There you go. You can see that actually fits completely. And if you look at how that fits now, I've got almost flush fit there. That is what you're aiming for, that total flatness. Now, if you're a hot glue modder and you want to be a lazy git and do this the really cheap and nasty way, if you buy a waterproof one of these, they make them in a little enclosure and it has just two wires coming out of grommet in the back. You drill a hole up here and bond it to the back of the shell. It looks ugly as sin, but I know some of you don't find that a problem. Um, if you want a nice waterproof one, you can literally run those in the pouring rain. So here we have the uh, other shell half and you can see this cut here isn't the same as this cut on this side and I've deliberately left this wider here and here because then we want it to match and then we've, all we've got to do is centre the um, voltmeter into the hole. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to file off this side to match the other side and then we'll come back. So what you've got is you've now got to check the width. Now you can do it from this way up by just pushing the... So actually that is pretty much perfect now. You can see this top edge here is almost exactly parallel. As you can see, it's not a job you want to do anywhere where you're going to get in trouble for dirt. What we're going to do next is we're going to find the position of the screw hole here for the uh, piece of screw port that we've got. And what you want to do is you want to just roughen the inside of this area a little bit. Even DevCon, I've found, likes a bit of roughening. So I'm going to use my really rough file for that. Just And the area on the back. So just around the edge of the hole. So there you go, that area is all scuffed up and what you're going to do is you want it to sit, remember the wires on this particular model are the same side as the decimal point. So you want it to sit in here like that, and, but you don't want it to just bang down through because obviously it will fall out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a support structure along the side here and uh, there will be something to hold the, so we come back to our little 4mm strips. These little 4mm strips here, if I can pick one up, these 4mm strips here will go along the side and the idea about those is that they just hold it in place against the interior of the shell and then what we do is we make another corresponding structure to come over the uh, bottom here like that with another one inside and it actually acts as a little slot and I'll show you how to do that next because that's quite tricky and it does make a big difference so the other thing you want to do is just again scuff up this white part of the case just a little bit and uh, for this you're just going to use, I always just use a super type glue for this because it's much easier. And what you're going to do is you're going to put your thing in here and you're going to set your heights on those. So you want to cut a length, two lengths, turn over, mark, 
So you're just going to want two lengths that are the same width as the. You're just going to put a little bit of uh, super glue on here. You can use a cocktail stick to apply these if you're clumsy. Remember, with glues, less is always more. I'm using super glue because it's fast dish setting. If you want to get a bit of manoeuvring time, you need to use a gel super glue. So you're not aiming to stick this instantly. So you put that in there like that, and then you can do it by feel. You'll see we're still getting some movement in that part. So there you go. If you look now, that's completely flush. And we're going to do the same down the other side. So you can see that's gone in. And now if you don't get it quite right for the other side, what you can do is you can always just file that back like that to get the fit perfect. I'm allowing for a little bit of paint build up because I get about half a millimetre build over the whole blaster with paint and lacquer in my builds because I use very different paints to most people. You can also fit the screw port first but for filming it's easier just to do these. If you fit the screw port first, if you're doing your first one I recommend doing the screw port first because it makes life easier later. Okay so we've established exactly where the height of our um, shell is going to be so what we can do now is we can now measure the screw port so we can take the screw port and what we'll do is we're just going to attach it. Now not all, normally you have to file one face a little flat so I'm going to quickly do that and then I'm going to screw it onto there. So screw sizes for this job, um, obviously smaller is better and because uh, you don't want to really really ream this out. The first time you screw it in, hold it in a pair of grips, screw the screw in, then fit it to the voltmeter because it's going to be quite a tight fit. Now you can use old blaster shell screws for this and uh, another good place of getting screws for these kind of jobs is go and look for cheap toys in thrift stores like junk stick RC cars, anything like that or anything that's in halves and then just take all the screws out that gives you a good range of these nice handy black screws. Okay, so there's the screw port fixed in place. Now you want this screw to be a really easy fit into the port, you don't want it really really tight. So I filed off a little bit on the flat edge here, I've just filed a flat edge onto the back there. Now the reason you want it to be an easy fit in there is because you're going to have to do that with it inside the blaster and the screw angle here is really bad for getting a screwdriver in so I thought I'd warn you about that because I've had trouble with that before. Now the next thing to do is to mark here just about where your level of your shell is. Again remember you want to start long. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that off now and then cut that with your saw and then put it on and we'll file it to size. Okay, this is going to be hard to film, but what I'll do is you see, you'll slide that in there like that. Keep the wire out of the way. You've got to be careful of these wires because they do come off sometimes. Now, if we look at that from underneath, you'll be able to see just at this top edge here that it's actually not quite there yet. So I've got to file a little bit off. Remember, you're going to have a bit of glue under there and you will have some wiggle room. That's why we put these on, is to help us with the screw port. We're just looking at a simple mechanical fit, trial and error. And there we go, look. See, I've just broken off one of the wires from the back. So if you ever do do that and they break, if you have it facing this way, and with these three tags at the end, it's white, red, black. So that's just for reference. You do need all three for them to work. 